First of all, let me thank the ECR group, Mr. Bashir, our host, his wonderful staff for inviting me, for letting me, me listen to such authoritative figures, for sharing ideas and views, and if I might in particular for reminding us that politics cannot be reduced to tactics and message control. Politics is about ideas. As you know, in Italy we had elections last month. Uh, unfortunately, due to the combination of an old constitutional frame of reference on the one hand, and on the other hand, due to an electoral system designed not to produce any clear winner, we are now in the middle of nowhere. There is a hung parliament, weird negotiations are ongoing, and no one knows now at 6 o'clock p.m., which kind of government and when we will have a government. Uh, just the premise to understand the situation in Italy, please keep in mind an old and well-known quotation taken from Ennio Flaiano. He was a distinguished Italian writer of the 60s. He also scripted some of Fellini's movies. And he used to say that the situation in Italy is often desperate but not serious. Okay. <laughs> so in five minutes, I'll try to give you some good news, some bad news, to give you a picture as fair as I can about the pros and cons of the situation, what we can build on in Italy, and what may represent a threat to ourselves and to our <coughs> neighbors. The good news is that the so-called experts are finally speechless. The big wigs who failed to understand Brexit, who failed to understand Trump, who failed to understand the German elections, who failed to understand the French elections, also failed to understand the Italian elections. Uh, their purpose was to produce a grand coalition government led by the two so-called center-right and center-left moderate forces in order to bow once again to Brussels, in spite of a Venezuelan control of our TV public channels, in spite of the support of the uh, private TV channels, in spite of the support of the main papers, in spite of the support of the main fat cats you can imagine, in spite, in spite, in spite, they lost badly. This is the good news, perhaps the only one. The bad news is that the two winners, Five Star Movement and the League, which have been extremely clever at making the most at popular of popular anger against traditional politicians. They have been extremely clever. Unfortunately, they are not exactly reliable when it comes to foreign policy. They are ardent admirers of Mr. Putin and also when it comes to the economy. They both talk about cutting taxes very well. We agree with that, of course. But when it comes to cut public spending, they turn silent. And they both believe in a uh, strong in a more assertive role of the state, Five Star Movement key proposal is a guaranteed basic income for everyone. So you can imagine what this could produce in Italy. Uh, the picture. We have some potential. We would have some potential. We have a strong entrepreneurial spirit. We have and it's a patrimony, eight, nine million small businesses, which have been capable of a wonderful performance even in a decade of deep crisis. We are a nation of savers. 80% of our families have a house of their own. These are elements we could, we should build on. On the other hand, we have four, I don't find any other words, four cancers. High taxes, high public spending, 52% GDP, a banking system on the verge of crisis, and what is even more worrying, with an excessive portfolio of sovereign debt, so that an eventual crisis might be systemic. And the fourth cancer, or perhaps the first one, the most dangerous, is the third largest sovereign debt in the world. Let me give you some figures. The stock of the debt is 2,300 billion euros. 
every year we have to issue bonds for 400 billion euros. Every year we pay in interest bill 78 billion euros. Were the interest rates to rise, as it is absolutely natural and perhaps necessary, uh, by 1%, for example, we would have an extra interest bill of another 23 billion euros. That's the situation. You understand how delicate the situation is. So I'm winding up. You can understand that Italy is not in a position to get out of the EU or of the euro now. That would be a disaster. But we might be part of an EU renegotiation process. We might be part, and in that, I think that the ECR and the ACRE might play a fundamental role, create a sort of Anglo-Mediterranean, Eastern European ring as a counterbalance to the Franco-German axis. A renegotiation process based on some main points. The first one is to reject the disgraceful idea of a euro area finance secretary with the mission of harmonizing. On the contrary, we need fiscal competition so that lower taxes system can act as a model to the others. The second one is to say no to any other loss of sovereignty and to push for a multi-tiered union in which any member can participate in or abstain from programs that suit or don't suit them. And the third one is to pass in as many European countries as possible a sort of sovereignty bill stating that EU rules may be paramount unless they are overturned by national parliament. But, and I'm winding up, when it comes to domestic policy, the first thing that Italy has to do is a shock tax cut, a shock spending cut, and, above all, a shock sovereign debt cut. Unfortunately, I am one of the three or four guys out of 60 million people who is in favor of that. But we should cut our sovereign debt by four, five hundred billion euros with a massive privatization plan, packaging an equivalent value of public assets into appropriate vehicles with a mission of valorizing and selling that. In that way, you should pay less in terms of <coughs> interest bill, and you would find uh, 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 some room for a shock tax cut to have a vibrant growth and to sell to the Italian people and to the good part of the Italian people, the Ferrari stallion of a vibrant growth and not the poor donkey of these uh, 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 beggar-like uh, uh, negotiation uh, uh, in Brussels to get some zero point something as a concession from the European institutions. Grazie. Okay, thank you very much.